conceptual people talk Real about talk, it, it shots. Shots. all of the elements hello everybody dr rick wallace here dropping in on you i hope that you guys are having an unbelievable start to your week start to your day i hope you're closing out a week uh, that you're proud of for those of you who had a tough week had a rough week it didn't go the way you wanted it to go set that reset button get yourself recalibrated get your mind fixed on the things you know you have to do the things you want to do the things you desire to have focus on what needs to be done to become the person that can carry out the tasks necessary to have those things do those things and be those things that's what life is about life is about growing into who you need to be to do what it is you need to do nobody is where they should be everybody is on a journey everybody's trying to make it to a certain place uh, of course right when i get on the grandson uh starts crying you guys are going to have to just uh ignore it uh, and uh, we're going to keep moving through it. So that's the first thing I want to tell you. Second of all, I want to remind you, today is the last day to enroll in the 30-day uh, Your Best Life Challenge. Your Best Life 30-day challenge starts March 1st, but today is the last day to enroll. Tomorrow we will be doing the lottery one person who has enrolled i'm only accepting 25 people in this because i'm servicing the entire uh the entire outfit uh, uh one person will be pulled tomorrow from that 25 so a one in 25 chance of winning a platinum package of working with me life strategy life coaching uh consulting and counseling all a part of that platinum package that's 52 sessions a year long uh, a year-long program and plan of working with me a ten thousand five hundred dollar value absolutely free one person is going to win that what is the your best life 30-day challenge the your best life 30-day challenge is actually what working in parallel with me as i work on making a positive change in my life everybody has things they can change in their life i don't care where you're at what you're doing how well you've done that's something in which you can be better, something you can do differently, something that you can change that will take you to the next level. Uh, I do introspective examinations at different levels throughout the year. Every day I wake up and ask myself, where am I at compared to the day before? What have I learned uh, that I didn't know when I woke up yesterday? Uh, how have I grown? How have I failed in growing? What could have I done better? Uh, why didn't I do it better? These are questions I ask myself literally every day. Then once a month, I literally sit down with a pen and a pad and I literally go through and look at decisions I've made, how they turned out, what I could do differently, why did I make that decision? And I go deeper. Then every six months, I even go deeper. And what I've realized is that in my businesses, especially the Visionetics Institute, is, which is what encompasses what I do on days like this where I come and talk to you about how much you are capable of doing, inspiring, empowering, uh, uh, and encouraging. Uh, the Visionetics Institute is where we create change in life. We, 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 we uh, are about helping people reach uh, their full potential, help pe helping people reach their goals. It's about uh, dynamic change, dynamic empowerment. And uh, so there's this potential, but I'm saying, okay, why am I in this like this little locked in this little flight uh, pattern. And the reason is, while I am very good in the public, you know, I, I speak publicly often, uh, I write, I service people, everything I do has to do with dealing with people. I'm very good at it, but naturally I'm introverted. Meaning that when I get a chance, I get to myself. Uh, my idea of spending time with people is spending time with my wife and my kids and you know, my extended family, siblings and things of that nature. Uh, now, I've had times where I've spoke to thousands. I've had times where I spoke to hundreds. I've had times where I've done groups, and I excel at it. I'm extremely good at it. Uh, I get, you know, uh, make pr a pretty decent living speaking. So I don't have that problem, but my strong suit isn't that. My strong suit is speaking and stuff like that, but actually wanting to be around people, actually wanting to cultivate relationships isn't my strong suit. I prefer small circles. I prefer to be to myself. And what happens is I've I'm not that that means I'm not good at networking. 
It means that as in my, when I'm in my natural habitat, my natural way of thinking, I don't follow through on cultivation. There's a bunch of people who come to me on a regular basis. Hey, man, I would really love to work with you. I love what you're doing. Hey, man, give me a call. Maybe we can connect. Maybe we can do this. I'm like, hey, man, I love it. Thanks a lot for the support. You do a great job, too, blah, blah, blah. Then no follow through. That's me. That's a poor habit. You have to network. You have to make connections. One of the biggest reasons businesses fail is you don't have enough resources, enough access. There are things that you could be doing for people, and in turn, there are things people can be doing for you, and you're not doing it. That's an issue with me, and I'm willing to admit that. So I made a commitment to myself that starting March 1st, I am going to develop habits that cultivate relationships. And I am going to work on developing these habits. This is something I teach everybody so I know what I'm doing and how to do it. I've just never made myself do it uh, with any consistency. So what I'm going to do, that's my thing. So I decided to invite 25 people along and do it in a way that people who would not normally be able to work with me can so I made it extremely affordable, $99.95. For $99.95, you're going to get four sessions over 30 days, because it's a 30-day challenge, you're going to get four sessions. Each one of those sessions are valued at $350. You're going to get a personal plan developed for you that is specific about what thing you want to change, what thing you want to improve on. We're going to get the plan. We're going to do a free disk assessment to determine what your personality, strengths, and weaknesses are. Why? Because you want to attack your strengths. People are always talking about improve your weaknesses. You need to improve your weaknesses, but where you're going to gain ground in this world is operating in your strengths. Know your strengths and ride the hell out of them. That's where you're going to get. Your strengths are connected to your gift. Your gift is what opens doors for you. So many people are working in areas they're not gifted in because they were told that's where they should be. So many people are living lives that they weren't even meant to be or that somebody else gave them because they weren't brave enough to create their own and operate within their strengths. So we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to put it together. Plus. You get your name thrown into the basket to be pulled out tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time to uh, be awarded a platinum uh, package membership, which is 52 sessions, an entire year. We sit down, we map out where you want to be a year from now. And we're not talking about dwarfed visions, colorless dreams, none of that. We're talking about making some major changes in your life that will produce major results and getting those results and, and evidence of those results in a year. And that is what is up, you know, with the lottery. So uh, the information is there. Email me or call me and tell me you want to be a part of it. I'll send you out uh, an invoice for the $99.95. Only those who pay, not just those who say they want to sign up. I got all your names for the people who say they want to sign up. But only the people who have actually paid the invoices have had their name on the list to go into the pulley, the drawing tomorrow. I'm going to do the drawing live on Facebook Live so that everybody can see what's going on. Uh, and uh, whoever gets pulled, gets pulled. You're going to get a full year. Um, so that's great. Buy it for, you know, you can get this 30-day challenge for yourself. You can get it for a relative or whatever, but definitely do that. I, and uh, there are other resources also in the description box. Now let's talk. A lot of times I talk to people and they'll tell me, Hey, Doc, you know, this is what's going on in my life, man. I really want to do this. I really want to do that. I really want to be this. I really want to be that. But, and I'm like, okay, what's this but thing? This but is, I don't see how I'm going to do it. I, You know, nobody in my family's ever had a business. Nobody in my family's ever got a doctorate degree. Nobody in my family has ever uh, earned a million dollars or became a millionaire. Nobody in my family's ever even had any form of wealth. Uh, nobody in my family has ever survived marriage. You know, I, I, I want to be married to my wife, you know, X, X, Y, Z. I want to be a good husband. I don't have any models of good manhood or, of being a good husband or a good father, but I want to be a great father to my kid. I've had all of that come to me. And you know what it boils down to? It boils down to a lack of faith, a lack of understanding of identity, of who you are and direct relationship to your design and your designer. It, you're, you're not here by accident. You're here on purpose, meaning you have a purpose here on earth. And that purpose is associated with something extraordinary, something spectacular, something phenomenal. You were not created to be average. You were not created to be mediocre. You were not created to leave a, a dingy imprint on the earth saying you didn't really do anything of any true value. That was not your the meaning of your design. That was not the purpose for you being here. What has happened is life has happened and you have bought the lies of life. 
In other words, you came into a situation where you lived and grew up in extreme poverty. So you bought into the lie that everybody else in the family bought into, that your lot in life is being poor. No, it is not. You uh, Maybe you bought, grew up in a situation where there was plenty of family dysfunction, no real true marriages to look at and see and model. So you thought, hey, this is what life is. Nobody really stays happy. Nobody stays married. So this is what it is. That's a lie. you got to put in the work. you got to trust and believe that even in the most darkest times of your relationship that you have the ability to rise above it. You say, well, look, well, what, what if I don't have the faith? Some of the things. One of the things I study, and I have this admiration for John Wesley. John Wesley is known as the great revivalist. He's also known as the father of the Methodist movement, the father of the Methodist church. And John Wesley was methodical. That's where you get the name Methodist from. He was very methodical in the way he did things. And he, he, once, he once said, this is where I got 100 men of purpose from. He once said, give me 100 men who fear nothing but God and hate nothing but sin and will change the world. And he absolutely and actually did that. He took 100 men who feared nothing but God and hated nothing but sin, and they changed the world. It's the, so in, in essence, he just sit up there and said that, but he, he, he was a very honest person as well. And he was having these back and forth conversations about um, uh, a, a form of uh, a theory in theology, uh, the, the doctrine of election, you know, who are the elected. And he was having this uh, discourse by way of letters with a guy here in the U.S. He was in England and this guy was in the U.S. named John Whitefield. And they were going back and forth. And John Whitefield was a Calvinist and, 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 and uh, West was an Armenian. And so one believed in uh, universal salvation, eternal salvation. One believed in a special elect that were actually born to be saved. And so they had these discourses. They were friendly, but they were discourses. And one time Wesley asked Whitefield, he says, I'm struggling with my faith. What should I do? And Whitefield's response was powerful. Whitefield says, preach faith until you have faith. And, and I, I kept going on with it, preach faith. And why? Say, but, you know, whether Whitefield knew the, the, the psychological dynamics and the mental and uh, mental makeup of what was taking place when he was saying it, he was saying something that's truly obviously. Even when you can't see it, keep speaking it. Why? Because if you keep speaking it, you plant a seed in the subconscious of its reality. Sometimes it's not there yet. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And what? The evidence of things not seen. So, so what, 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 what some, something someone told me one time. He said, there are going to be times that what you want to do is so huge that your faith isn't huge enough to get you through it. Rent some faith. Borrow some faith. Find somebody. And what I found is there have been times in my life there were people who saw things in me that I didn't see in myself. People who believed in me beyond what I believed. And what you can do is you can literally tap into their faith. And, and many a times you had parents. When you were up against something, they say, baby, you can do it. I had those parents. Baby, you can do it. Baby, what, you, what, what are you doing? You're actually taking the step, not because your faith says it, but because somebody you believe in, somebody you trust is believing in you enough that you are stepping out and borrowing faith. See, they'll tell you you can't do that, but you can. You can literally rent somebody's faith, borrow somebody's faith, take somebody else's faith and step out. What you cannot afford to do is sit back and look at life and let the the, the, the situations and the circumstances of life dictate to you what you're going to do, who you're going to be, what you're going to accomplish. Let me explain it to you a different way. You have this relationship with the designer, with God, with the Most High, the Almighty, however you refer, uh, refer to this most powerful and pre prevalent uh, source of power, knowledge, and energy. Uh, that holds everything in order in the midst of chaos, whatever you want to refer to it as. I don't have time to tell you what to do. It's not my job. My job is to tell you if you're connected and you say that you believe in God, the most high, whatever you want to call life, the universe, whatever you want to call it, that in that connectivity, you have to know you are accessing the purity of power and knowledge, that there is absolutely no problem that you're going to face, that the answer isn't available. Why? Because you have access to the mind of God. There's never going to be something that you're going to go through that is too much for you. Why? Because you have access to the power of God. So if that is the case, then why am I ever becoming frenetic and unglued to the point that I become uh, paralyzed and non-functional? 
because as long as I'm connected to the power source, as long as I'm connected to the source of knowledge, as long as the answer is on its way to me, I simply have to be in the right place, sitting still and confident about what I'm about to do. See, some people will look at me and they've seen me at times when things didn't look the way they should have looked up. I was in the midst of a dark place and people would look at me and they would say, man, what's going on? And, and I say, man, uh, you, you're looking at the circumstance. And, 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 and they're saying, you're in denial. No, I'm not, I'm not in denial. I see the same circumstance you see. But see, I understand that life is a lot bigger than circumstances. Life is a lot bigger than the momentary situations that we find ourselves in. I understand that because I'm directly associated, connected with, and one with God, that I am never in a place where I don't have enough power. I'm never in a place where I don't have enough knowledge. I am never in a place where there is no answer and a solution to the thing that I'm facing. So I'm not going to become frenetic and glue. Let me explain it to you in a different way. I see the circumstance. I acknowledge and recognize that the circumstance is there. But that's just one problem. That's something in my spirit that disagrees with the circumstance. That's something in my spirit that says I can out, I can outlive it. I can overcome coming. I can beat it. I can win. There's something in my spirit that says the circumstances. Doesn't matter. There's something in my spirit that is grounded in faith that transcends the facts of the circumstance. You better start understanding that you're never trapped in anything. The enemy will try to convince you. And when I say enemy, I'm not talking about uh, some one entity somewhere with controlling all the evil. I'm saying the enemy many times is that dark side of your mind that's pointing out the negativity, that's pointing out what's going to go wrong, that's pointing out that you can't do it, that's pointing out all of the things. Then the enemy could be uh, the darkness and the evil working in someone else who is purposely blocking you. See, we get real, it's real easy to blame God and the devil when you don't want to have accountability. See, it's easy to sit up and say when something doesn't go wrong, it just wasn't God's will. It's easy when something goes right to sit up and say the devil just busy. But when you have to sit up and say that I'm actually here because of a decision I made, I'm actually here because I didn't move left when I should have. I'm actually here because I made friends with people I shouldn't have made friends with. I'm actually here because of allowing somebody that didn't deserve to be in my life to step in my life and they're wreaking havoc. That's not the devil. That was my choice. I've got to make a better decision. I've got to make a better choice. I'm not saying what exists and what doesn't exist. I'm saying that you have the ability within yourself to make choices that changes your life, that there's no entity that, 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 that exists that can stop you from being everything that you were designed to be, and you were designed to be great. There's a gifting in you. I have worked with people with Down syndrome. I have worked with children and adults with autism. I have worked with those that were declared mild and mentally, mentally retarded. I have worked with those who were impoverished, worked with those who are wealthy. I have worked with everything in between. And what I can tell you, I have yet to find a person who didn't have a gift. I've seen gifts in people with autism. I've seen gifts in people with Down syndrome. I've seen gifts with people who are immensely and intensely impoverished. I have seen gifts across the board. The problem is we are not taught to walk in, operate in our gifts. We have been systematically programmed to operate within a system that serves a few. And we get lost when we're not connected to the system. We keep expecting the system to perform everything that we need to perform and we lose sight of our connectivity with the most high. And we lose sight with the power that we have through that connectivity with the most high. We lose sight of the, uh, 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 the unlimited knowledge and the answers that are available to us through the mind of the most high. And what do we do? We fold under pressure. borrow the faith that you don't have. Find somebody that's done it that'll tell you it's possible. Find somebody that'll tell you that no matter how dark it gets, you can, you can do it. Find somebody that'll tell you it's gonna be rough, but you can do it. Find somebody that's going to encourage you and lift you up. Find somebody that will be everything that you need to be right now, but just don't have. I'm telling you, you can, you can make it up a borrowed faith. Until you, you borrow it, until you build it. What you don't do is accept defeat. 
What you don't do is accept defeat. There's absolutely nothing that is impossible. Think about it for a second. Everything that you do now without even giving it a second thought was once considered impossible. That was a time that Orville and Wilbur Wright were told, you got to be out of your cotton picking mind to think you're going to create a machine that can get up in the air and you can ride in it. And now we got planes that carry hundreds of people and thousands of pounds of luggage and thousands of pounds of fuel. And it's made out of metal and it moves through the air and it travels around the world because somebody refused to accept impossible as an idea. You are now talking on a, a watching this on a device that may not even be connected to any wires or connected or plugged in to anything. It may be receiving this signal by way of uh, of satellite, by way of cellular uh, cellular uh, signals or a number of other signals, and it's coming in. It started out with an idea that hey, I can run wires from houses to a central board. And people can pick up and tell the person at the board to plug them into another person at another location, and that person can pick up, and I can talk to them. That's how it started. And then somebody got the idea, what? We don't even need the person at the board. We're going to fix it to where we can literally send the signal and connect with the other person by just simply dialing. And it started out with a rotary dial. Then it, No, it started out actually by tapping. You tap the number in. And you wait, you pause, tap, tap, pause, tap, 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 pause, and then you get the number in. And then it says, no, we're going to dial. And then it got rid of the dial and got the push button. Then they say, you know what? We don't even need the wires. We're going to use cellular uh, signals. And now you're talking on a device that somebody was told a long time ago, you've got to be out of your mind. You can't sit up and talk to somebody in a whole different city. Now we're talking to people around the world, not giving it a second thought. We're on video. Right now, you're having a video uh, experience that 30 years ago would have been figured impossible. Roger Bannister was told, you'll never run the mile in under four minutes. Matter of fact, it was believed not only was it impossible to run the mile in four minutes, under four minutes, that if you happen to run the mile in under four minutes, you would die because your heart would explode. And I can only imagine how many people were actually on pace to break the four minute barrier and realized it and subconsciously slowed down because their mind was saying, oh, if I run this pace and went and, and go on the four minutes, I'm going to die. And they slowed down. But it was Roger Bannister that stood up and said, you know, I'm going to run the four. I'm going to run the mile in under four minutes. And they asked him how he trained for it. He said it wasn't a physical thing. He said, I saw myself doing it over and over in my head. I ran it. I ran a, a sub four minute mile a thousand times in my mind before I ran it on the track. And then guess what happened? After Roger Bannister did the first two years, another thousand people did it. And by 1972, over 2,000 people had done it. And now high school students run the mile in under four minutes. It's not even given a thought, but it was once considered impossible. What thing in your life right now that the world thinks is impossible is going to be the thing that you're going to show them it's not? You should be living your life to prove there's no such thing as impossible. And you better understand that no matter what you go up against, no matter what you face, no matter what you deal with, that there's something on the inside of you that's greater than the challenge you're facing. There's something on the inside of you that's greater than anything you're going to come up against. Get intimate with it. Connect with it. Stand on it. You were built and designed to be great. Step out of the shadows of mediocrity and introduce yourself to the world. That's my challenge to you. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget, check out um, that 30-day challenge. I'm telling you, it's going to be off the chain. That is four sessions, a whole 30 days with yours truly. This is going to be an opportunity for a lot of people who couldn't normally work with me to work with me and see what it's like to get a peek inside of the world that's mad and crazy and where we do things that people don't think are possible. If you'd have known where I come from, where I got to, and then how far I fell, and, how, and after picking myself, how far I've gotten since, 
you'll be sitting up saying, shoot, I can do anything. How many times people wrote me off and now they're looking at me going, well, I'll be damned. They told me I wasn't going to get book number one published. We're talking about doing book 22 right now. Just, 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 just believe. Just believe. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. As I always say, I'm going to live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E. I challenge you to do the same thing. And on that note, I'm out of here. Here I come, ready or not. Frank Ocean made this record hot. From the conceptual, yeah, uh, sounded better than Jay. Real talk, I ain't throwing shots. Careful who 